Free Hi, I'm Caitlin Gidry. I'm Taylor Powell. I'm Kaysen McGee. I'm Abby Woodson. I'm Darian King. And I'm Matthew Garrett. Wishing our Tigers an awesome season. Go and Tigers welcome inside go. the Coach's Corner with Coach Brandon Morrell coming to you from the SportsRadioBeaumont.com studios. Heard live here every Tuesday from 5 until 6 also on SportsRadioBeaumont.com, AM 1450 and AM 1510. Got a great show for you tonight. Coming up here, we're going to talk to a lot of the high school coaches and a whole lot more, so be sure and stay with us this entire hour here on SportsRadioBeaumont.com, AM 1450 and AM 1510. On the show initially, we're going to take a trip up the road to Indian Country over in Port Natchez Groves, talk a little Indian football and specifically District 22-5A with Port Natchez Groves own uh, Brandon Faircloth. And, uh, Coach, we appreciate you giving us some time here inside the Coach's Corner and uh, talking about the new season. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited. You got it, man. And, of course, everybody wants to talk about the big game, but uh, that's a little far down the road, Mid-County Madness, the big uh, big ball game against the Nederland Bulldogs. But overall, just talk to me a little bit about uh, how your summer workouts have gone and how you feel about the upcoming season. Uh, our kids have been working very hard. We, uh, we're excited about where we are. We had a, we had a great spring, and uh, kids have done a great job throughout the summer. The kids, the kids at PNG do a great job. They work hard. They care about it. You know, they're, uh, they're excited to get the season going and get practice going August the 4th. Uh, we're excited about our year. Talk to me a little bit about how that experience from the qualifying for the state seven on seven tournament is going to help your guys as you approach new season. How that experience helps you out? Oh, you know, I think anytime uh, you can compete, it makes your kids better. You know, no matter really if it's a baseball game or a seven on seven, you know, anytime kids can go out and compete together uh, as a team, uh, I think it helps your cause. So, uh, you know, we uh, we uh, we're very fortunate to uh, qualify to in one of the qualifying tournaments and uh, play against teams like Houston Lamar and Plano and some other teams from the Metroplex. So uh, it'll be fun. It'll be challenging. It'll be humbling at times probably, but uh, very excited for our kids and uh, what a great opportunity for them. Again, PNG head football coach Brandon Faircloth joining us here inside the uh, Coach's Corner here with Coach Brandon Morrell, too, as we heard every Tuesday from 5 until 6 here on SportsRadioBeaumont.com. And, Coach, just looking at some of the predictions, I know a lot of people don't get caught up in the early season predictions out there from the Dave Campbell Texas High School Football Magazine, but, of course, now name something new, District 22-5A. It's going to be very competitive, I'm sure, each and every Friday night. You can't take a playoff. Of course, we talk about the game with uh, Mid-County Madness, Nederland Bulldogs, but now you've got the, the Ganders coming in for Baytown lead, Lumberton, Ozan, Vider Central. Uh, what's your overall outlook on the uh, District 22-5A? Uh, you know, ever since I got to PNG six years ago, uh, it's very competitive. You know, it's uh, our district uh, from top to bottom is very close. Uh, every Friday night, you can win or you can lose. Uh, it's uh, You know, it's every game comes down to a few plays. Um, that's what your hard work's about, trying to make sure that you, you're on top of those uh, certain plays there in the game when it counts. But uh, no doubt, our, from top to bottom, our district is very competitive. A lot of teams finish 5-2 and two and 4-3, and three, you know, and every year there's, you know, five or six teams toward, the, toward week 9 or 10 that still have a chance to get in. So uh, that's uh, something that, you know, we uh, keep our eye on and, and know that, you know, how competitive a league it is. And from the first district game to the last district game, you've definitely got to be at your best. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys are predicted now as one of the four predicted playoff teams. You look at Nederland, of course, you guys at number two, uh, Beaumont Central, and, of course, I mean, Baytown Goose Creek going to be very, very competitive there. But then you worry about the, the, the bottom four there if you look at Ozan Vider and then Lee and also Lumberton. You know, Lumberton's one of those teams, I guess, that could surprise some people if they get some, some depth and experience back. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we, you know, last year we were picked sixth and finished second. So, you know, any, anywhere you get picked, uh, you know, anybody can finish anywhere and, uh, Lumberton does have a lot of kids coming back, and uh, you know, adding the two Baytown schools definitely adds a new dimension because uh, we haven't played them, but uh, they're obviously well coached and uh, are going to play hard. So it's uh, it's going to be an interesting district season, no doubt about it. And uh, we're just hoping to be one of those top four teams and uh, you know get into that week eleven. Now, of course, you got uh, eighteen returning Letterman, uh, eleven starters, six on the offensive side, five on the defensive side. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, of course, a couple of those key losses. You had Jeremiah Rose, who signed with Southeastern Louisiana, and Alan Soriano with Missouri Valley. He's got to make you feel good and, and a credit to your coaching ability to have two guys going to play Division One college ball. Well, we do. Uh, um, man, those, those guys are, are very tough losses. Not only were they great players, they were great students and great kids and uh, definitely set the bar high here at PNG. And, uh, you know, for uh, those guys going to be tough to replace, I don't know that you really can replace them at this point. You know, you've got to find guys and uh, just look for other areas to improve your football team. Jeremiah and Allen both uh, multi-time all-district picks, all-area picks, and both of them are all-state. So uh, those are tough losses for our football team. But we do have a lot of kids coming back. We've uh, – uh, you know, I said six on offense and five on defense, and uh, our JV's been very competitive. I think they went nine and one last year, so we've got some guys to pull up off the JV to plug in some spots and uh, you know keep going. 
Talk to me a little bit about some of the players to watch here. You know, uh, Brent Halfin, of course, playmaker at the tailback position. You've got uh, Caleb Sparks. Uh, of course, your quarterback, Kai Walker. Uh, another quarterback, Adam Morse. And uh, linebacker, Michael Hughes. Uh, what are some of those accomplishments you look for on the offensive and defensive side of the football? You've got some impact players. We've got quite a bit of our secondary and our linebackers back. And then we only lost Jeremiah. So he's probably been one of the only skilled kids we lost. So uh, we have a lot of kids coming back in the skilled areas. But just like you and I know, you know, you know, winning football games still comes down to the offense and defensive lines. And uh, that's where we have to replace a lot of kids. So uh, we lost four offensive linemen and lost every defensive lineman. So, um, we, you know, those, those, those groups of kids have worked hard. We feel good about where they are, but still, we're, you know, we're placing that many kids. You know, early in the season, those those non district games would be very important uh, for us and those kids to you know to get their work in and be ready for districts come September. Again, PNG head football coach Brandon Faircloth joining us here inside the coach's corner with uh, coach Coach Brandon Morrell. Heard every Tuesday from five until six here on uh, Sports Radio Beaumont dot com. And also, I like to say as a coach, sometimes it's there's there's always players that can shock you and kind of kind of come from a little bit you know under the radar. There, any underclassmen that you're keeping an eye on this year that can possibly impact the varsity uh, squad? Uh, sure, we've uh, we've got a, a, a wide receiver named Keenan uh, He He's a freshman last year, played on our JV. Uh, a very very talented receiver. Uh, we've got a kid named Logan Lejeune um, who will probably you know play a lot in our secondary as a sophomore. So. Uh, we've definitely got some underclass. Our freshman team was was ten and zero last year. Was undefeated district champion. So definitely some young kids. And the year before that, we were as well. So we we definitely got some young kids in our program that can play. And uh, if we need them, then we'll go get them and, and put them out there. And you know, let them go to go to war on Friday night. Now I'd be remiss, of course, if I didn't ask this question. A lot of the the Port Nature's Grove's faithful out there. It's not one of those games you overlook every year. But as long as I've been covering high school football in Southeast Texas, even before I ever got into coaching, it was one of those games with Mid County Madness. It just adds a a little bit of extra spice every Friday night when it comes around to it. And, of course, a lot of times it ends up deciding who goes to the playoffs and who, who can actually win District 22-5A. Of course, I know you don't like to look ahead. You probably take it as most coaches do one game at a time. But talk about the impact of that game, not only just economically, but what it means to the Mid-County area, Needle and P&G. Oh, it's it's an exciting game. It's uh, it's no, it's the number one rivalry in the state of Texas, in my opinion. I've coached all over, and uh, I, I haven't seen anything that matches it, you know, up to this point. Uh, it's an exciting game. It's been very close four of my five years, and uh, Nederland uh, lately has done a great job. Coach Newman and his staff, you know, they've won three the last three district championships. So uh, us, along with everybody else, have got to, you know, they're picked first, and uh, they still have that target on their back. And you know, we've got to we've got to go after them and, and find a way to win. Talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, you, uh, one of the teams that, of course, everybody's got their eye on this year. And, of course, the last year, it maybe surprised some people. You look at uh, some of the Beaumont schools kind of uh, maybe not getting the respect they deserve, you know, with the bigger programs. But the, the job Toby Foreman did at, at Beaumont Central, of course, making the playoffs in his first season. And, of course, a lot of impact players to keep an eye on over there. But, you know, if he builds around his offensive-defensive line, it's always one of those dark horse teams that, you know, you also have to keep an eye on, correct? Oh, absolutely. Anytime you play the Beaumont schools, uh, you know, they're – Coach Foreman, you know, they're very well coached. Uh, they have incredible athletes, uh, you know, not just on the secondary and the a receiver and quarterback and running back, but, you know, in their O-line and D-line as well. So uh, extremely talented, uh, very well coached. And, uh, you know, last year we beat them in triple overtime. So, you know, it's just, it's just one of those games where uh, it's going to come down to the last like it did last year. And uh, hopefully – uh, we can stay close to them and have a chance to win at the end. Uh, talk about some of the changes. I know a lot of the, the, the some of the money went into the renovation of uh, you know Indian Stadium over there, and there was a, like new scoreboard put up, and, and of course the AstroTurf put down. And I mean the appeal itself, you know, from anybody that walks in there from the media standpoint, or just other coaches or other personnel, you guys have one of the finest facilities to play in, if I'm not correct. Uh, we're very blessed. You know, our our communities, Port Nation and Groves, uh, passed the bond in 2008. And uh, they built a stadium and the track and those kind of things, and uh, with the scoreboard. And uh, you know, there's a there's a huge commitment here to winning, and a huge commitment to the kids here, and uh, a huge commitment to our football program uh, by our fans. And uh, we are very blessed every day to work and play uh, in that stadium. It's all because of our fans and the the two communities here and the, the families that uh that approve that bond. And it's definitely a blessing. We don't take it for granted. Again, PNG head football coach uh, Brandon Faircloth joining us here inside the uh, coach's corner. Heard every Tuesday from five until six here on AM fourteen fifty and AM fifteen ten as we continue the countdown to kickoff. And you know, coach, I look at you know just the legacy and the history of a great program like that. And of course, it must must make your job easier when you have those impact athletes that not do, just you know do well at football, but you have a lot of just I mean a plethora of guys out there who participate in all sports. And I mean, you know, if you look at it from a standpoint of doing well with the football program each and every year, it has to make you feel good also as the athletic director to see all the sports programs at PNG do well, correct? 
Oh, absolutely. You know, we encourage we encourage all of our athletes to play multiple sports. You know, anytime you're a 4A school, now we're 5A. Uh, you know, every sports team depends on um, basically the same group of kids. You know, we've got a couple of kids that, you know, only play one, but most of our kids, uh, our athletic department thrives on uh, kids playing multiple sports. So uh, something that we uh, we have to do here at Peens, we don't have enough players to uh, for everybody to individualize. So, uh, you know, we – we uh, we work together, you know, our baseball and basketball and football and soccer. You know, we all work together to help out and track and uh, to make sure that all the kids have the opportunity to play and participate in whatever sports they choose. And, uh, it, you know, definitely makes all of our teams better, which uh, makes our athletic department stronger. Talk to me, speaking of strength, talk to me a little bit about, you know, you mentioned you're losing some of that uh, those lettermen from last year who made up the offensive and defensive line. But I also understand you have a pretty good uh, secondary coming back there on defense that can definitely make plays for you. And, you know, when the game comes down into the trenches, third and fourth quarter with, you know, five or six minutes to go, uh, you've got a pretty good secondary coming back too as well that can make some impact plays. Uh, we do. We, uh, we have quite a few uh, members of our secondary coming back. Uh, both corners are back. And uh, one of our safeties, we're taking in one of our receivers, Avery Murdoch, who started as a sophomore receiver. He's going to move over to the secondary. So we actually have a very experienced secondary uh, that have all played on, in, in some Friday night games. So, uh, you know, we're excited about them. And uh, they've worked hard this summer with uh, the summer workouts. And 7-on-7 seven seven is, is great for them to go compete against the, the top teams in Houston and East Texas. So uh, we've, uh, we've got a lot of work. And uh, we're not where we need to be. But uh, definitely, you know, when we start practicing August 4th, we will have some experience back there. And every school, of course, it's a new season for everybody. Everybody wants to be one of those four playoff teams. And, of course, with the uh, two new Baytown schools coming in, Baytown Goose Creek and, of course, Baytown Lee, uh, interesting to see what the PNG Indians have on the uh, 2014 Outlook. Coach uh, Brandon Faircloth, appreciate your time this week inside the uh, Coach's Corner. Best of luck to you, your players, and your entire program as we uh, transition throughout the season. Uh, thanks for your time again. Any, anything we can do for you uh, coming up on Friday nights, if we, you want to give us a call, we can report some scores and kind of be the mouthpiece out there for the uh, Southeast Texas community. We'd love to have you and appreciate your time. And, hey, best of luck with the uh, PNG Indians this season. Thank you. If I can ever do anything to help you, all let me know. As we continue our countdown to kickoff, and we're going to go a little bit north up there, the Evadale Rebel Land. And my good friend, head coach uh, Mark Williams with the Evadale Rebels, kind enough to join us here inside the coach's corner with uh, Coach Brandon Morrell. Coach Williams, appreciate you taking the time out to join us and hope everything's going well. Thank you, Brandon, so much for having us. We are having a good summer. Tell you what, you know, speaking of that, too, I always ask coaches one of the first things, how's that response been? How's the numbers been for you guys as one of the most important things is to take advantage of those off-season workouts and off-season conditioning? How have the the guys responded so far? They've done really well. We've had pretty decent turnout. You know, vacations are hitting here now, and so it's kind of been spotty at times, but our young kids have been coming uh, pretty regular, and, and, you know, we're excited about about our young ones coming. We'll talk a little bit about, of course, you know, losing 15 Letterman. You do have uh, eight guys coming back, three on the offensive side, five on the defensive side. I know last year four and seven is nothing to, to write home about, but, of course, a Division II by district finalist, and you did uh, finish three and one district. How do you use that momentum and, and kind of segue into a new season? Well, I, I mean, our, our kids take a little pride in it. Uh, you know, we've been back eight years, and they've, they've, made, they've got in eight years in a row, and so it's been a – it's kind of been a, just a continuing with our seniors every year coming in, you know, that, that kind of an expected thing. Uh, you know, we're going to have our challenges this year. You know, we, we have lost several kids. Uh, we've had three real big classes in a row at a 1A school. I think we've been over 10 graduating in the last two years and then lost, like I said, 15 kids. And so uh, we're going to be, you know, reloading. Well, talk to me about some of those prospects and, and players to watch. Of course, you got your quarterback, uh, Logan Hare, who I know very well watching him play last year. Uh, with my time with Sabine Pass and, of course, some other prospects up front there, Casey Black, and then you look defensively with Austin Reeves and also uh, Blaine Kilpatrick and Colby Thompson, Morgan Black, uh, Ty Frazier. I mean, the list goes on and on. Talk to me about some of those guys and, and the uh, contributions they make to your football team. Well, Logan, you know, he's a big catalyst for us naturally. He kind of came into his own as a quarterback last year, his first year for him to play there. And, uh, you know, just an exceptional athlete, uh, could play anywhere and, and uh, we're going to have certain packages with him on, on a lot of places. And, and I think he's kind of coming into his own at the end of the year. He really got better every game. And so we're excited to see where he's going to be. And, and uh, he's been up the summer working hard. And so, uh, you know, trying to put on a little what more weight. And, and, and we're hoping he has a, a, has a great year for us. Now, if you look at that district, of course, with all the realignment that happens every two years, now 12-2A in Division Two, of course, uh, Comanil. And Ed Trotter, I talked to him a few days ago, and he talked about some of the expectations and how he's trying to change the climate and culture for the Colonial Bulldogs. You look at Norman G coming in, of course, Iola, 
And uh, the Sabine Pass Sharks and Burkeville Mustangs, I'm sure each and every Friday night once you hit district season is going to be very competitive. I really think it is. I think it's going to be, as, 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 you know, even as it's been a long time, I, I think everybody's uh, in our in the same boat. Uh, some of them are going to be young like us, but some of them are going to be seasoned veterans. And so, uh, you know, Normandy and Iowa definitely are two really good teams coming in our district. And uh, Coleman Hill always plays good football, and Burfield's team pass has always been a great rivalry for us. You know, we play you and everything. So it's just been, uh, you know, know all the kids and coaches. So, we're excited about the opportunity. And what excites you most as far as those teams? You know, talking a little bit about that to kind of elaborate more, you do have, uh, you know, a guy like Kenneth Thomas up at Burkeville and, and head coach Pete Martinez at, at Iola and, of course, now Trotter at, at Coleman Hill, Kevin Morton at Normandy. You know, some of the coaches have been around a long time. What excites you the most about, you know, playing that competition week in and week out? Well, you know, it's exciting, but we're going to have a work cut out, too. We know that we understand that. I know Coach Trotter well, and, he, you know, he does, I know he's going to do a good job, and, and, and I was excited he got his job at Coleman Hill. He's a good man, and, and uh, I know he'll do a good job there for them. And, and you know, I, I, I know Pete uh, from when he was at Warren and, and uh, got to know Coach uh, at Normandy a little bit. Uh, we played up playing Love Lady, but it went down to the last ball game, them and, them and Love Lady, so we thought there's a chance we could possibly play them so i know they have some good kids coming back so you know overall i just think it's going to be a i think it's going to be a real competitive district i think every night you know it's it's you're going to, have to go out and play head coach mark williams joining us here inside the coach's corner with coach brandon morrell here on sports radio beaumont.com also am 1450 15 10 talking a little evadale rebel football and coach and it must be exciting for you to have such a great program there with evadale had a chance to you know play against you last year and, and compete against you i know you're one of the finest coaches in southeast texas you know, your guys are always prepared to play, and I think you know, a lot of that, too, we talk about athletically being the, the physical part of it, too, but I think one of the things I was impressed by your kids, they also have a good mental makeup. Well, you know, I'm blessed. I've got, I've got some great assistant coaches, and, and and it goes from there. I mean, uh, I, and our kids, our kids are they, they respond well, take a little pride in what they do, like everybody's, and, and – uh, but, you know, football's a thinking game, too, and, and I think sometimes, you know – uh, you got to be physical, and, and, and we try to preach that for sure like everybody. And uh, But I think our kids really respond to our program and what we've tried to do. And, and, you know, we've had to tweak it here and there like everybody at the small schools uh, with what you have. But uh, kids kids have always responded in whatever we've thrown at them. So, you know, it, makes you, it does make you feel good as, as our program goes. Talk to me a little bit about some of those uh, contributions that your coaches have made. I mean, I, my, myself, I'm in the business, so I understand the last couple of years, the hours that go into it. But you've got a real great staff, and if you want to throw some of those names out there, you've got a staff that does put a lot of hours and makes a lot of contribution to the Rebel program, correct? I will. I sure will. Uh, you know, on the offensive side, uh, we were blessed to get Lawrence Williams back last year. that's been at Nederland and was with us. And, and uh, Lawrence does an outstanding job of offensive line and Ron Luna. Uh, you know, I don't think I could have better better two guys working with the O line, and you know that's a big fixture on your offense. Uh, I have two young coaches, Drew Charlton and, and Keith Talbert, that do, do an awesome job with our with our secondary and receivers. Uh, Danny Connor uh, calls our defense on defense, and he's been you know with at Evadale and with me for a long time. And then Jacob Terrell, uh, it came on uh, two years ago, and and. You know, I'm, I'm getting old in this business. Coach uh, Jacob played for me. Coach Talbert played for me. Uh, or Coach Coach Charlton. And so uh, they're not only just good people; they're, they're they're they were great, good players, and 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 they're just good. They're just good for our kids. And so uh, I couldn't be more blessed as a staff. I really couldn't. And of course, the hours those coaches put in, and just I mean, a plethora of work too, as well that they have a chance to do a lot of the scouting reports and get you ready to prepare to be prepared to play on Friday nights to look at the huddle and, and see the film there. But also talk to me about, you know, one of the things I had a chance to do last year was coach for the first time, coach junior high football. And, you know, it was great to see those kids go out and play seventh grade and eighth grade and, you know, as they make their way and open the floodgates into high school too. But talk about how strong and how committed your young kids are at the junior high level. So when they get to the next level, they get to ninth grade, they already know the expectations, the climate and culture has been set there and how successful your junior high program is to transition it to high school ranks. Well, I have, and, and and there again, I've been blessed. You know, you know, working in a small school, it's it's, it's tough number wise as coaches. But I was blessed. Uh, coach Luna and and Coach uh, Carroll uh, was kind of in charge of our junior high. Now we were just like everybody else. Everybody kind of gets involved, game nights, and and uh, 
you know, we get excited about our junior high playing, and 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 I think that's big. And at our level, you 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 got to be a part, and uh, you know, get with those young ones and get them started. And you know, we we coach them just like we do at the high school level, and 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 start with fundamentals just like we we do, and try to put our base stuff in there and let them have a lot of fun. And and uh, you know, kids have always responded. We've had good numbers, and and so we're 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 kind of looking forward to another good group coming. And, you know, you look at that word fun, do you think sometimes it gets lost in the shuffle a little bit? I think it does. You know, the, the you know our world's changing and, and uh, the game's changing a little bit. And uh, I think you got to make it a little fun for them. Uh, you know, it's a tough game. Football's, football's a physical game. It's, uh, you you got you to keep them interested in it and, and make it a little fun for them so they'll get after it and play. And we always, you know, just tell them if you'll give me everything during the week, then you're going to get that fun on Friday night and Thursday night. So, and I think they, you know, they, they understand that and it's just been a good fit. And of course, you know, you can't do anything without the uh, community support. Of course, one of those, those areas out there where I know Eva Dale know the rebel program very well. Of course, you've been a, a key component of that for many years as you've been in the business, but uh, talk to me about the sponsors. And of course you couldn't do your job without the uh, community support. Well, we, you know, our, our, we have, a, we have a unique, community that that supports everything we play and and uh, i think that really attributes to our our kids uh you know getting after it every time they step on the board or the uh, the field of in anything they play there's a fried fried situation there and our community backs us 100 percent. and uh you know i i couldn't tell you how many we have a lot of times but i know the kids i know the kids see that and, and it's just nice when the stands are full and they see all the people out. You know, we we've done a midnight madness for the last eight years, and first year we did it. You know, we didn't really know what to expect. Some other people had did it in the area, and so you know, we get out there and walk out the door at midnight, and you know, our whole community's there, and you know, that was big for our kids. So uh, that's kind of been just a continued tradition that we we're, we'll do again this year. That's the first thing they ask me every year. You know, coach, we. We're going to do Midnight Madness, aren't we? And, you know, so they get excited about that. So I think that kind of kicks off our community support every year. So it's it's been exciting. Well, District 12-2A is going to be very competitive, of course. The Coleman Hill Bulldogs, Norman G. Panthers, Iola Bulldogs, and, of course, Burkeville and the Sabine Pass Sharks. Uh, Coach Mark Williams, we appreciate your time here inside Coach's Corner. Best of luck to you, the players, the organization, and the entire school district this year. Uh, if we can do anything on a Friday night, love to help you guys report some scores out there and uh, – Best of luck in your quest for the playoffs and, of course, a quest for a state championship, which is the ultimate goal. You're a class act. Appreciate your time, Coach. And, uh, like I said, if we can ever do anything for you, check in with us. Same here, Coach, and, and congratulations on your new job and, and continued success. You too as well, Coach. That's Coach Mark Williams with the Evandell Rebels. We'll come back. More coaching interviews around Southeast Texas as we continue our countdown to kickoff here on SportsRadioBeaumont.com. When you exceed the speed limit, it takes longer to stop. A whole lot longer. Failure to control speed is a leading cause of crashes in Texas. Be safe. Drive smart. This message sponsored by TxDOT. Sports Radio, 1450 AM, 1510 AM invites you to climb into the cage this Thursday from 5 to 6 PM for Fight Night, hosted by Chad Cooper. One of my favorite mixed martial artists of all time, Mr. Chet Congo. Just tell me your overall thoughts uh, of signing with uh, Bellator MMA. Well, yeah, I'm exciting. You know, just a fake tool to compete in that tournament. An hour of everything mixed martial arts and pro wrestling. Your in-depth analysis along with interviews from the top fighters, promoters, and biggest names in MMA and pro wrestling. Let's go! Fight Night on Sports Sports Radio, 1450 AM, 1510 AM. Peekaboo, peekaboo, smile. Smile, buddy. Come on, smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. <sighs> yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. You know how boys are. Or maybe he's teething. Oh, poor baby, I think his gums hurt. Maybe he's just tired. Or maybe his tummy hurts. He didn't eat that much. Maybe he's not ticklish. You think maybe he's scared of the dog? Maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe it's a phase. Maybe he just doesn't like smiling. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs or see a doctor today for an autism screening. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. And it can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. I don't believe it. My savings are gone. They're gone. You're kidding. 
Nope, they're gone. They're gone, gone. Okay, all right. Think about it. Where did you have them last? I remember I was home, then I took them, and then I spent them on that vacation to Aruba. Then I bought this miniature suit of armor I saw in the in-flight magazine. And that's the last you saw of your savings? Yes. This is so weird. I know, right? Weird? Uh, not really. Not saving now means no money later. You'd be surprised how quickly a little money from every paycheck can really add up. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. The armor is cool, though. Oops. I think I broke its gauntlet. You broke my favorite part. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. 7,000 high school students drop out every school day, stack their desks one atop the other, and it's a pile more than 17,000 feet high. Go to BoostUp.org and learn how you can help. Brought to you by the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. And welcome back to the Coach's Corner here on SportsRadioBeaumont.com. Also heard on AM 1450 and AM 1510. Coach Brandon Morrell coming to you every Tuesday from 5 until 6. As we continue to the start of high school football season, counting down the days, and we got a chance to go up the road here and visit with a good friend of mine. We've done this before in radio, but he's the head coach of the Westbrook Bruins, formerly at Orangefield. Kevin Flanagan joining us here inside the Coach's Corner. Coach, great to have you, and uh, just tell me how are things going so far at Beaumont Westbrook. Oh, man, everything is going wonderful. Appreciate you having us on tonight. Uh, you know, it's just a uh, building process, like always, for us. And uh, it's been year three, so everything is really going good. Got a lot of great kids, a lot of great coaches, great community, and all that, you know. Well, Coach, talk a little bit about, you know, of course, you look at losing 28 lettermen from last year, but, uh, you know, a couple of those guys, you look at Justin Hervey, who signed with Utah State, and also Calvin Lewis. You know, Beaumont's been known for a long time as a rich tradition when it comes to Southeast Texas football players, but what does that mean for you as a coach to, to lose guys like that who have a great talent who can go on and play at the next level? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's uh, I guess the NFL may be the only, the only level where you don't just roll through them, and, of course, that's changing now, but... Uh, no, we, that's part of the process. You know, I think these guys come in, they're, they're certainly young men, and hopefully when they leave us, they have, uh, they've developed, uh, uh, character wise and so forth. And I think those guys are all super, super young men. And so you hate to see them leave and what they bring to the program. But at the same time, they've, uh, left their legacy and their mark and helped develop these young kids. And so, uh, you always miss them, but at the same time, it's time for these young ones to step up. And we've got some really, really good kids coming up that we're excited about. Them. And Coach Kevin Flanagan joining us here inside the Coach's Corner talking some Westbrook Bruin football. And, Coach, I looked at all the different uh, realignment, of course, where I'm going to be next year with uh, Baytown Sterling. You look at District 216A, Galena Park, North Shore, Port Arthur Memorial, LaPorte, Deer Park. I mean, there's not going to be a week where we can actually take off a Friday night. Is that correct? Uh, that's exactly right. And uh, I tell you what, if you take a week off, somebody's going to beat the brakes off of you. It's, uh, you know, everybody in this district can play, and they've all uh, – they do a great job coaching their kids, got good kids, and they'll do some good things. And so you got to be on your toes every week. And uh, But that pays off. You know, if you want the fortunate ones to get in the playoffs, it certainly uh, helps you along that playoff run. So it's a very good district top to bottom. And, uh, again, you better be ready to come uh, and bring your A game every Friday night. Again, talk to me a little about some of those contributors this year, some players to watch. You've got, you know, Dustin Burns. You've got Keith Corbin, your wide receiver. Demarcus Smith, who's your running back. Also a kind of a dual threat in Isaac Aubrey and, and Christian Blewett. Uh, of course, I know his brother's side with Northwestern State. But talk about some of those players to watch this year for the Westbrook Bruins and some of the things we can see in 2014. Well, we've, we've got a lot of them. And, of course, we're replacing a lot of guys. And we're really excited about these guys. But uh, just starting offensively, uh, starting where it starts uh, for us, the offensive line. Of course, Dustin Burns has uh, been offered by several places, uh, Lamar and uh, a couple of other places, and uh, really excited about him. Uh, worked his butt off this summer and uh, off season, and so he's going to be good playing center. And then uh, Ethan Coffin is about the same size. Both those guys are about 6'4", 6'5", uh, anywhere from 280 to 290. And uh, then we've got a young kid in there that a lot of uh, – a lot of the recruiters really spend a lot of time on is uh, Alfred Beverly at 6'5", 340, and uh, got a huge upside. And uh, so, anyway, along with some other guys, we're really excited about that old line And then uh, in the backfield, of course, quarterback Justin uh, Essex, we uh, started him the last five games of the season, and he'll be back and worked really hard. He'll be a junior this year and just doing a great job. 
and uh, really adapt to the offense. Of course, uh, DeMarcus Smith back in the backfield has uh, picked up a lot of speed and strength, and I think uh, we're expecting big things out of him at the tailback position. Uh, and then we've also got Cameron McKinney, who's also a very special running back, and uh, he'll play some receiver, running back, and so forth. And uh, then out wide, of course, Keith Corbin is a special kid out there. He can do a lot of things, uh, got a great work ethic, and uh, got some big-time offers coming up. And so uh, the other side of him is you got Isaac Aubrey, and, uh, you know, again, he's a really good one. Uh, North Texas has offered him, and then Darrell uh, uh Baldwin is also another one that can really, really run, along with some young kids that uh, uh, Will Gabriello, some of those guys, and then uh, probably the hardest working guy on the team, oh, uh, uh, Matthew Crutchfield. So, anyway, offensively, got some good ones coming. And then uh, defensively, Christian Blewett, as you mentioned, starting at nose, uh, did an outstanding job last year and uh, really controls that front. And uh, uh, inside linebackers, we've got uh, uh, Godfrey, and then we've got uh, Desmond Bills. And uh, those guys are doing a good job along with uh, Tanner Hilliard. And so, anyway, uh, uh, again, there's a safety back there, Ennis Gaines, about 6'3", and can run. And uh, I'm probably missing a bunch of kids. In fact, I know I am because there's a, just a, a lot of good kids out there. David Shishan playing defensive end and just uh, Greg Salami. And, uh, I mean, we, we're really excited about this young group. They've worked hard and uh, really got some big things coming Again, Coach Kevin Flanagan is joining us here of the Westbrook Bruins, talking a little Westbrook football. And, Coach, that goes to, to I guess, to your credit, too, of course, the work ethic of the kids. But that's got to mean a lot to you when you have that, that many kids that have a lot of Division One potential to go to the next level, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you, you coach them all the same. and uh, But it sure is fun to coach them once with a lot of great ability like some of these guys we got. And, and when you mix that with a high level of work ethic and stuff, that just makes it even better and uh and these kids have really worked hard. And so, uh, we're again, that creates the excitement for us. Now, you mentioned kind of a 6-4 and four record. I mentioned some of the teams earlier now they are going to be a part of the new District 21-6A. Same teams. We're just calling it something different right now. But 6-4 and four and 3-3 three and three in District last year. What are some of the things that have to go right to kind of take that next step and get back to the playoffs where Westbrook's tradition has been, you know, for the last 8 to 10 years? Yeah, you know, that's one of the things we, we talk to the kids about, about leaving no doubt. And last year, you know, a lot of people felt like you're three and three, taking four teams that you're in the playoffs, and and uh, of course that doesn't always work out that way, as uh, as we certainly saw. And so, you know, talk to kids about it, that's that's our business. We got to take care of our business and make sure that there's no doubt in there at all uh, by winning the ones that we we need to win. And uh, so, you know, that's been kind of a rallying rallying cry for all season uh, to make sure that we take care of those things. But uh, you know, again, it's just uh, you, you don't want to leave it up to somebody else there. And, and what we've got to do is just uh, come week in and week out. We've got to play and, uh, again, take care of our business. Now talk a little bit about some of the schemes. I always ask coaches, of course, you don't want to give away too much having to play each other this entire season. But uh, offensively, defensively, what can we see from the Westbrook Bruins this year? Uh, you know, last year we, we implemented the pistol offense and, uh, you know, spent some time out in Nevada with those guys and uh, – Spent a lot of time with that. Been very uh, uh, impressed with. I think our running game was, was very good. I think we were number two in the district in offense last year, and uh, look to build on that. And uh, uh, defensively, we're going to go to a little different scheme, uh, but it's still based out of a five-man front. And so, uh, changing over the defensive coordinator uh, to Eric Peavy and Heath Curtis will be co-coordinator. So, definitely be some changes there. But uh, I tell you what, in the springtime, those guys did an outstanding job, not only coaching them up technique-wise but just getting the kids to play hard and have fun. And so uh, I'm really excited about seeing that defense run the ball and do the things that we saw in the spring. So um, should be good. And head coach Kevin Flanning is joining us here of the Westbrook Ruins. And, Coach, talk about a couple of foes you're going to see there on the field this year and uh, a couple of guys I've yet to talk to, but we're going to talk to you on this show, John Kay over at North Shore. And, of course, the job that uh, Kenny Harrison does at Port Arthur Memorial, you're going to see two of the best teams not only in southeast Texas but probably in the state of Texas, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and, and you can start with North Shore, and those guys have uh, done a tremendous job. And, uh, you know, and John will, will continue the tradition that uh, they, they've established over there with Coach Amon, who is uh, absolutely a legend. And uh, John's done a great job with the defense uh, for a number of years, and uh, so I'm sure that will continue. Uh, and they're just always loaded uh, uh, on both sides of the ball. Again, their kids are hooked up. And so, 
uh, they're going to get after you. Better bring your A game in that one. And then, of course, uh, old Kenny Harrison's done a super job in Fort Arthur uh, getting those kids going. And, uh, again, they're always very talented. And, and uh, Kenny and his staff have done a super job of getting them headed in the right direction. And, you know, they've, they've had a lot of success with that also. And, you know, I really think the team that uh, gets overlooked a lot of times will port with Coach Jeff LaRue and his staff over there. You know, they won the district two years in a row prior to last year. And uh, so they they continue to do a great job. And uh, so I've always been very impressed with those guys. And so, yeah, it's uh, a well-coached district as well as uh, a lot of good athletes and uh, certainly one of the toughest, uh, not the toughest district in the state. Can you uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, summer workouts? I mean, this is the time of year where our athletes do get in shape and, of course, have the off-season conditioning program to take advantage of. But some of the things that you've seen, some of the numbers and how they've gone for you at Westbrook this year as far as the summer workouts are concerned? Yeah, sure. I mean, we've been very excited. We've been three, we're three weeks into it, taking this week uh, actually off. It's open for voluntary workouts, but uh, as far as being led by the coaches, we've been three weeks uh, we average about 90 to 95 kids a day, and that's just uh, that's the upper class, and that's really sophomores through seniors. And then uh, we have about another 30 right now of the younger kids, the incoming freshmen, and some eighth graders, and a, a few seventh graders. So, you know, you can really see the excitement. In fact, the kids are hooked up, and uh, I think that's one of the telltale signs of your program is how many kids are going to show up in the summer. And uh, to date, we have had a, a tremendous turnout, and uh, you know, the kids understand. One of the things about playing at the 6A level that uh, I think you certainly get is the fact that there's more competition for positions. And so, you know, that's that certainly figures in there. Certainly there's a lot of self-pride that goes in there. But at the same time, uh, a lot of these guys realize that they're competing for a position every day. And so they may have had that position at the end of spring ball, but uh, if they don't show up in the summertime and roll back in, there's a good chance that somebody else is going to pass them up. So, uh, I think that's part of the driving force. And uh, in addition to the fact that there's something about playing for the book, and, you know, it's just a pride factor. And so, uh, you know, I've been very pleased with the summer workouts to date. And uh, after this week, we'll come back and hit it again hard for another three weeks. So uh, hopefully they'll just continue to do what they've been doing. Again, Coach Kevin Flanning is joining us here, talking a little Westbrook Bruin, you know, football here. And Coach, I can talk a little bit about that pride, having been an ex alum there, graduate of 1998. Of course, everybody wants to be a part of the Brook, but talk about the community support. I mean, I've known it for many years, and I've stayed close to the program. We've gone through some class reunions and things like that. But talk about uh, you know the community support and what it means to be a prideful Westbrook Bruin there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is a very proud tradition, and there's not a lot of programs that. Uh have a state championship in their background, and then especially just the tradition of Westbrook uh, with the whole process of uh, winning the state championship that first year of existence, especially after starting off, uh, I think, with a 1-3, a 1-4 and three, one and four record, something like that, and uh, being able to step in, win a state championship, and uh, what, a, what a great tradition that established in the first year, and so there's a lot of pride community-wide, and uh, you know, and, and not only the, the guys that have played for Westbrook, a lot of people in town and so forth. And uh, I think they're anxious for us to uh, return to that level of uh, being a state contender. And uh, so, you know, the, the stadium is packed. We've got a beautiful stadium we play in. And of course, we play in the big stadiums every week. But uh, we've really got a good following and uh, been very supportive. Got a great booster club and just a lot of things going. And so it is a great place, great place uh, to coach. And, uh, you know, it's a great, uh, I'd say a great day to be a Bruin because it's, uh, these guys have uh, uh, certainly earned the respect they have amongst the peers and community, and, and the community is doing a great job of supporting us. Well, Coach Kevin Flanning of the Westbrook Ruins, always a class act, good friend of mine, Coach. I've known you since the days of Orangefield, and we've been doing radio for a long time. I appreciate you giving us a little time here inside the Coach's Corner with Coach Brandon Morrell here on Sports Radio Beaumont.com. Best of luck to you this season, and I tell you, I guess we'll, we'll try to go a little bit easy on you up at Baytown Sterling this year, but I'll, I'll tell Coach Pete Guerrero to uh, not be too tough on you, all right? Hey, I appreciate it, man. It's always good to uh, talk to you. You do such a good job, and uh, – Look forward to seeing you, and yeah, y'all take it easy on us. Not too far from us here in Beaumont, Texas, going to talk to our Central High School football coach, Toby Foreman, joining us here on the radio. Coach, we appreciate you giving us a little time today to talk a little Central football. Awesome. Thank you for having us. 
You got it. And uh, tell you what, first of all, Coach, uh, talk a little bit about the uh, transition. Of course, last year uh, you came from a school like Lamarck that had winning expectations. And coming to a school like Central, I'm sure you tried to actually put those same expectations into Beaumont Central. What are some of the things that you were excited about, some of the accomplishments after the first year, especially making the playoffs? Well, you know, the first first and foremost, uh, what we tried to do was with the staff that we hired and the staff that we kept was, uh, you know, just create a winning atmosphere, create a winning culture because – I don't think I think they've had I think Central in the past has had a winning tradition, uh, just not consistent. And that's one of the things that we want you know the kids to understand is consistently you have you got to come every day and do what you're supposed to do, and the results are going to be more consistent you know rather than sporadic. And uh, you know that was that was one of the biggest things that, that we had to overcome at first. But uh, being here for for 16 months now, and uh, I think one of the biggest one of the, one of the best things I'm proud of is is you know the kids have bought in. And they're doing what we've asked them to do. You know, we don't have a lot of problems with them uh, as far as them coming up here and getting their workouts in and doing the extra things. And I think that's something that, that kind of went by the wayside in the past couple of years before we got here. Again, Central Head Coach Toby Foreman joining us here on SportsRadioBeaumont.com. And, Coach, you and I both came from a winning program back. I got my start a couple of years ago at a school like West Orange Stark and then transition, and next year I'm headed over to uh, Baytown Sterling. So the, the tradition continues with big programs like that. But in your mind, what did you think made West Orange Stark that effective and made them such just a winning tradition-type program? Well, you know, I've been around that program since literally since the schools were combined in 77 and uh, having my father work there all those years. And I can I can say honestly and easily that the, the biggest difference between West Orange Stark and, and – teams that I think in, in the area and even out of the area is the consistency and the coaches uh, over a long uh, long period of time. Coach Hooks was there for, you know, 36, 37 years. My dad was there for 30 years. Coach Thompson was there for, you know, has been there for 37, 38 years. And, you know, anytime you have coaches that are there for that long of, of a period, you're going to have, you're going to coach kids of, of kids of former players, even grandkids of former players. And, you, you know, you develop a tradition uh, and, and just so that, you know, how, how things were operated there, it was a winning tradition because of the discipline, because of the hard work. And that's the type, you know, that's the type of thing I'm trying to bring here to Central was, is the consistency in the coaching staff and, you know, the, the consistency in discipline and the consistency in the uh, day in and day out hard work in the classroom and, you know, in the, uh, in the weight room and on the field. And, you know, you talk about it, hard work and consistency, and you're, you're very right. I got a chance to kind of be exposed to that first and foremost there a couple of years ago. And talk about that when it comes to the off season, how important that is for, for guys to stay in the weight room, in and out, and to hydrate themselves, but also what you've seen so far in the response of the summer workouts and how, how good that's been for you. Well, it's been very good. Um, you know, and that's – we call this – we break our spring off season down in, in what we call three phases. You know, you got the first phase about six weeks, the second phase is another six weeks. And then your third phase is the, the final six weeks. And then you get about a, a eight or nine day break. And then the fourth phase is the summer phase. And that's a, that's a time where, you know, Coach Hooks always said, you know, that's a time where some people are going to show up, some people are not. But it's going to determine where they end up at whenever, whenever uh, two days starts. And, um, and, and it makes or break some people. And, and I really believe, uh, that's one of the things we have right now that's going for us in the positive direction. We've had, uh, we have around, uh, between 125 and 150 kids that come work out every day. And, uh, you know, that, that says a lot because it means those kids are buying in and they're making that commitment because in the summertime there's plenty of things that, that you can be doing, but these guys are focused on the upcoming season and, you know, they, they want to win. They want to they wanna win at a high level, and it shows because of the work ethic that they're putting in in, in the summertime. Now, Coach, talk a little bit about your district this year. Of course, we just had UIL realignment, which happens every two years. And uh, were you affected by it? And if not, talk about how tough the opponents get every Friday night when the lights come on and you've got programs like Ozan and you've got programs like PNG, Nederland, Vider, Lumberton, programs like that just consistently get better every year. Well, we, we, what happened was with the realignment, we lost Livingston and LCM and we picked up Baytown Lee and, and uh, Goose Creek Memorial. So, you know, like I said, I – it's hard to tell right now. Did it get tougher? Did it, did it? You know, I don't know, but I do know this: Goose Creek Memorial and uh, and Baytown Lee are both quality opponents that be coming in here, uh, and and it was already a tough district. I mean, you got Ozan, Vider, uh, Needland, PNG, Lumberton. You know, so I mean, you know, year in and year out, this is a very competitive district. These kids all know each other. The coaches are familiar with each other in the area. So you know, it's it comes down a lot of times to who makes the fewest mistakes in these games. You know, to determine the outcome. 
I know last year against Ryder, it came down literally to a two point conversion, and we were fortunate to be on the on the right end of that thing. But I mean, it could have went either way, and I mean, I, that game could have swung uh, the playoff scenario a, a different direction. So I mean, like I said, you know, um, this year I do think the, the schedule is favorable to us because we have Neal and PNG uh, and Ryder all at home, and um, so anytime you know you have a chance to get those guys at the house, that, that's a good thing. But um, no, it's the competitive district you're in, you're out, and I expect it to be uh, the same this year. Again, Central football coach Toby Foreman joining us in his second year now at Beaumont Central High School. The Jaguars there look forward to making some noise in 24A. And, Coach, talk about some of the, I guess, early performers right now. It's hard to tell until the lights come on Friday night until two-a-day start. But if you can throw some names out there offensively and defensively from what you've seen so far and what you've been impressed by. Uh, no, well, we have we have several guys that started last year that come back. But one of the things that we do is, and you know this from being in West Orange, is similar, is <laughs> – you know, we don't name starters until after the second scrimmage, and this year we didn't go through spring ball, so we'll have two scrimmages. Um, what that does is it continues to uh, create competition within the kids that they don't get complacent because, for example, uh, you know, the running back last year was so-and-so. If, if, if he's not working hard in the offseason, doing what he's supposed to be in the summer, uh, academically in, in the spring and the fall, and, and you know, then then he falls off and somebody else is going to take his place. So, you know, we really don't name starters. We do have returning uh, guys that, that were key in key roles last year. I think we had about about six on offense, about six on defense. But um, you know, those guys got to continue to work because they know they're fighting for a spot. And uh, what we try to do is, is make this as much like a college atmosphere as possible. And collegially, I'm telling you, you know, if you if you if you go to sleep for a couple of days, somebody else, I promise, you is working. They're going to take your spot. So that's one thing we try to do is encourage the the uh, competition, and we try to make this thing, uh, like I said, as successful as possible. And that's the thing. That's one of the ways we think we can do it. And who are those some, uh, I guess, those those few returning players that you have, not named starters just yet, and, of course, they're having to work for it, but some of those key returning players that, that you're going to count on this year. Can you throw some of those names out there for me? No doubt. Um, defensively, uh, you got Isaiah Pouncey, you got, uh, you got P.J. Locke, you got A.J. Jones, uh, Andre Morris, Kendrick Haverly. Um, there's several guys on the defense uh, side of the ball that just play. They didn't maybe not start. But those are your core right there on defense offensively. On the line, you have Ken Marks and uh, Morales Ramo. And then, you know, in the backfield, you, we played several running backs last year. Uh, Devon Whaley and uh, Xavier Jones were two of them. And then uh, Michael Jaquette played some quarterback. You also had Brandon Wise and Cornell Seals that played some at the, at the receiver slot. So, like I said, there's, you know, I just named about 13, 14 kids <laughs> that played a lot last year. Some of those guys are two year starters going in their senior year. So, you know, high expectations here. Uh, this group of kids. Is a is a very very good academically uh, good group of kids, and they're very very committed to to success beyond high school. So, like I said, the expectations are high for these guys, and uh, we've just been real pleased with the uh, with the work ethic thus far. Again, head coach uh, Toby Foreman joining us here on SportsRadioBeaumont.com, also on AM 1450 and AM 1510 as we continue our high school football coaching carousel here. And, Coach, just in your opinion, uh, what, what makes a, a football player successful? What, what do they have to concentrate on from, from the young days? I mean, a lot, a lot of the football players these days, you see kids playing Pop Warner football. They want to follow, of course, brothers and sisters in multiple sports. And what are some of the things that a Pop Warner football player, you know, someone who gets up into the middle school ranks, junior high, and then gets into high school, has ambitions to go on and play uh, college football and things like that? What, what's your advice to, to someone like that who who, who starts so young? Uh, but what are, what's, what's some of the things they can concentrate on? Well, number one is, you know, you listen to your parents, listen to your coaches and teachers um, because, you know, they're going to guide you through it. And, um, and you know, and, and – in most instances, there's there's plenty of quality, uh, both youth and you know junior high, middle school, high school coaches around here. Um, I know in, in in our area, in our zone in Beaumont, there's a ton of people that support our kids. There's a ton of people that do you know go above and beyond as these kids are coming up with the little leagues and whatnot to develop. And you know my my advice to the young kids is, is you know listen to to the people that are directing you and guiding you. And then as you get older. It's got to be something to separate you from the from the rest of the of the the athletes and the and the players and football team. You, you've got to it's got to be something more from within to put in the extra work and put in the extra time. Uh, at the same time, you know you've got to make sure that you're taking care of your body, putting good things in your body consistently. You know, drinking water, doing things you're supposed to be doing, and and literally coming every day to work and get better. Because if you'll do those things. You know, with 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 athletic building that 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 uh, you have, 
then you know you're gonna all we can ask for is to get the most out of each individual and if that's enough to go on to the next level it is if not then it's not but if you put yourself in a situation to be successful you know then then you have a better chance of going on to the next level and being successful at the high school level and the uh the college level and, you know, Coach, we talked about, you know, programs such as Whetstone Stark, where you and I both were, and, of course, uh, have a chance to go to a school like Baytown Sterling next year. I'll get a chance to learn from one of the great minds out there in Pete Guerrero. You know, your time over at Lamarck, and you, you sit there consistently in 3A, and you make the playoffs every year, and you compete for championships after championships, and you see kids go through the different types of programs, and another program like the Lamarck Cougars with that winning tradition. What did you have a chance, or what did you learn most importantly that's, that's key for you in your second year? What did you learn from head coach Mike Jackson? Uh, well, Coach Jackson understood, and it's something I understood as well, that, you know, there was a tradition already in Lamarck, and, uh, you know, his goal was just get the kids to, to, to raise it to another level, you know, and, and that's one thing that I'm telling you, you, you can't, there's no substitution for tradition, because with that, you have pride, and with the pride, you have hard work, and with the hard work, you refuse to quit and refuse to lose, and it just trickles, it continues to escalate to a higher level, and that's what you try to do is just elevate it to another level. And that's the one thing um, that I've always tried to do in coaching. Um, I, I can remember when I took over the track program at West Orange, it was already successful. There was already tradition. What I tried to do is raise it to another level. Uh, same thing when I took over for Coach Crouch as an office coordinator. There was already a tradition. We were already good offensively. I just tried to take it to another level. And what I'm trying to do right now here in this program with our, our assistant coaches and coordinators is – there, there was not a, a consistent tradition. I'm trying to, you know, lay the we, – we've already laid the foundation for the tradition, and then once we get everybody bought in, now we got to raise it to another level. And that's and I'm talking about not a, a, an area, local level. I'm talking about a statewide, uh, you know, championship-level uh, tradition. And that's one thing that, that I learned from Coach Jackson and Coach Hooks and uh, Coach Barry Norton at Texas High and Coach Dick Owen and – at uh at Baytown Lee, I've been blessed enough to be coached uh, or work under people that um that are extremely 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 successful, and there's a reason why. And I promise you, I've taken notes. So the one thing that I that I know that um that has been brought here is is the winning winning um, work ethic and the winning tradition uh, from the other places to try to instill that in these kids here. And I tell you what, raise it to another level, you will, Coach. And I tell you what, good luck on those state championship aspirations. Best of luck to you, your program, your players. Congratulations on all the ex- success out there, too. With Beaumont Central, look forward to checking in with you. Of course, I'll be just right down the road from you, so feel free to uh, give me a holler anytime. We'll put some scores on the air. We'll put some kids on the air. We'll do what we can to have fun. And a uh, best of luck to you with the Beaumont Central Jaguar program. We appreciate you giving us some time. All right, good luck to you guys. It's Sterling and Coach Gray this year, okay? Got to sign off for the night, but thanks to all the guests, all the high school coaches, and everybody who makes this show possible here at Cumulus Broadcasting. We'll see you next Tuesday. Don't forget to tune in. Check out the Facebook page. Check out sportsradiobeaumont.com. Look under shows. Don't forget to answer the coaches' quiz. Have a good time there. Play around and just enjoy all the different items at sportsradiobeaumont.com. We'll see you next Tuesday from 5 until 6 here live in the sportsradio.com studios. Also listening live AM 1450 and AM 1510. Appreciate everybody making this show possible, and we'll see you next Tuesday from 5 until 6 on SportsRadioBeaumont.com and also AM 1450 and AM 1510. Good night. Bosch is the quietest dishwasher brand in the U.S. and now feature a third rack that gives you 30% more capacity compared to Bosch two-rack models. See yours at Lowe's today or visit Lowe's.com slash Bosch. Mark down your calendars August 23rd at Buffalo Wild Wings in Beaumont. The Houston Texan cheerleaders, along with Toro, the official mascot, will be making a stop to sign autographs, take selfies, and have a good time. Buffalo Wild Wings in Beaumont, August 23rd.